Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, welcoming you to a brand new series called The Others. Now, what are The Others? Well, The Others are the forgotten game engines. In this day and age, realistically, there are three game engines that go to the forefront of people's minds when you talk about 3D game engines. That is, number one, Unity. Um, Unity is probably the 9,000 pound gorilla in the room. Number two is Unreal Engine. So if you're not using Unity for your uh, next you know, commercial game, there's a pretty good chance that you're using Unreal Engine. And if it's neither of those, then maybe you're of an open source bent and you're using the Godot 3 engine. And frankly, if it's not one of those three, well, you're one of the others. And that is exactly what we are going to cover in this series. The series is um, not an in-depth look by any means. In fact, it's the exact opposite of that. The entire idea of the others is to focus on the other game engines that are out there. And I'm not going to do a deep dive on them, you know, at least not initially. What this is, is about exposing you to them, talking about traits of them, and that's really about it. I'm going to try to keep each video down to like the five or ten minute mark. And in some cases, I'm not even going to have access to the game engine. I'm just going to have access to research, potentially some screenshots out there or descriptions. Um, and that's kind of why I may not have covered them in the past. Some of them have a uh, price tag attached to them. Some of them are on platforms I may not use consistently. Some of them may be of a programming language I don't traditionally use, etc. Now, the nice thing with this particular series is since it's not a huge deep dive, I don't have to make a huge investment of time. So generally, when I work with a new game engine, uh, before I write about it or blog about it or anything, unless it was just released, I will try to spend you know several days to weeks beyond with that engine before I talk about it. I like to have some concept of what's coming out of my mouth. And in this series, we're going to throw that to the wind. This is more about I'm going to do what as much research as I can on that subject just to basically present it to you. But I am not by any definition of the word a subject matter on a lot of the engines I'm going to cover. And what's kind of cool with this is we're going to get into some of the more niche areas since there's not a huge time investment. I can cover a broad spectrum of game engines in this series, at least if you guys are interested in me continuing this series. So that means if the um, you know the engine may not have the broad appeal that those big three do, uh, but it still could be particularly interesting. For example, the very first engine I'm going to start off with in the other series is an engine called Panda, uh, Panda 3D, and you should expect that video to be up very shortly after this one. And that engine is. Um, C++ powered, so big, nice there, open source, big, nice there, uh, and probably the preeminent Python 3D game engine there is. Now that's a little niche and there's not a lot of modern day commercial applications being made with it. Panda 3D is nowhere near as interesting as, or it's interesting to a broad audience as the big three that I mentioned earlier are, uh, but it is still an immensely interesting engine. Um, it's been modernized and, and you know, I'm not going to get ahead of myself too much because I am going to be talking about it in that other video, but it's an example of the kind of engine that kind of gets a little bit left behind. It's in the shadows and if you're a Python developer or you're looking for an accessible first engine for 3D development, it's actually a really good choice as you will see shortly. And I also intend to cover some engines that have perhaps a price tag that seemed a little prohibitive, but it'd be cool for you to know about them, especially should that pricing change, or some engines that are a little bit more niche in their focus, perhaps their voxel engines, perhaps their retro style raycast engines, um, you name it, I kind of want to talk about it in this series. And the whole point behind the series is hopefully to just expose you to other options that are out there. And hopefully you guys can expose me to other options that are out there, uh, at least in the game engine round. Please don't expose me to other things. Please just don't do that. So that is my goal with this series, to basically just do surface level, here is an engine out there, here's what it does, you know, potentially here's what it's cost, here's what it's used for, or here's what it's been used for in the past, but I am no subject matter expert on any of this stuff, so, you know, take it all with a grain of salt. Also, I want to make one thing perfectly clear at this point in time, is just because I cover something on my channel, you know, past, present, or future, doesn't necessarily mean I endorse it or the opposite is true as well. So, um, for example, I did a tutorial series on using uh, Unreal Engine for doing 2D game development. I personally think that Unreal Engine, as it stands now, for 2D game development isn't really a great choice. I actually think that uh, most 3D engines are a pretty lousy choice for 2D game development, at least unless you're doing a 2.5D game or otherwise. Um, but, you know, I still thought there were enough people that are interested in seeing how 2D was done in Unreal Engine that I went ahead and did that series. Um, so again, just because I do a video on a topic 
doesn't mean that I explicitly endorse it. I try to keep my opinion, you know, I will tell you my opinion, and I generally will state that my opinion is in fact my opinion. Well, in this series, we're gonna get even more outside the box on that one. So there's gonna be a lot of videos potentially that I don't really see the appeal to, but I'm not gonna make that judgment for you. I just really, once again, I wanna expose you to as many game engines as possible over the life of this series. And then what's cool with it is, since I don't have to spend a huge amount of time on each video, I can again cover as many subjects as possible, but if something comes up, or if we cover an engine that you don't you, you as a community just absolutely fall in love with or show a lot of interest in, well, then it's quite possible I could do a deeper dive. I could do a uh, closer look at or a um, full-on game tutorial series for that particular engine. And this is a good way of, you know, testing the market, seeing what people are in fact interested in. So anyways, that is the premise behind the others. I hope it is of interest to at least a good chunk of you people. Uh, do of course let me know in the comments down below, uh, you know, if the series isn't really all that popular, obviously we're not gonna go that far with it, but I already have three or four engines in mind to give the others treatment. So maybe check those out, get back to me on what you think of the series, how you would tweak it, how would you would change it. And of course, the biggest thing I would love to hear is suggestions on engines to cover because you know I love game engines. This is part of what I do. And every once in a while I discover a new one and that is like Christmas for me. So um, if you've got an engine that I've never heard of that's still actively under development or close to actively under development, please do let me know about it in the comments down below. Um, it may not be new to me, it may be new to me, uh, but if you do show me something interesting, I can almost guarantee that it will be part of this series because that is exactly what this is about. To, you know, basically broadening people's horizons of what the options are for the lesser known, the little guys, or the, the more obscure or specialized engines that are out there. So hopefully we've got a lively comment section on this video and I will talk to you all soon. All right, goodbye.